When one of my friends told me that the Apple Watch Series 6 comes with features like heart rate variability tracking, heart rate tracking, oxygen saturation, sleep tracking data, I was like, whoa, I am getting this thing. But after using it for a while, my hell yeah turned into more like a maybe. This channel, by the way, is all about increasing your heart rate variability through regular techniques as well as tech. So consider subscribing. So the first feature that I want to talk about is the way that Apple will track your heart rate as you're sleeping. So every five minutes, it'll take a data point. And ideally, what we want our heart rate pattern to look like when we're sleeping is called a hammock. So it'll start in the middle and it'll just start to slowly dip more or less down towards the middle of the night and then it'll start to go back up as your cortisol level starts to rise and your body and physiology are getting you ready to tackle the day. And Apple does a pretty good job displaying the way your heart rate looks throughout the night and you can kind of tell whether you're hammocking or you have a different pattern called like the downward trend line or the upward trend line. All of these could be discussed in a future video. But for now, just know that your goal is the hammock and your other goal is to make sure that your heart rate doesn't dip, let's say to levels of like 30 and it doesn't peak to levels of, you know, above 100, too much higher than that. Now for the other features that I'll be discussing, just wanna say sorry in advance, Mr. Tim Cook. I know your intentions are great, but I think your team really dropped the ball here. Now the heart rate variability feature was definitely one of the most frustrating to use. First, I probably spent half an hour YouTube searching and Google searching how to even invoke this feature because it turns out you need to invoke it via the Breathe app and not via some feature that says heart rate or heart rate variability. And the other problem is that the Breathe app only allows you to do a five minute reading. So let's say you wanted to try out a different style of meditation to see which one increases your heart rate variability the most, you can only meditate for five minutes. It's just silly. Next, I wanna talk about sleep tracking. I don't think you need me to tell you how important proper sleep is for your health or for your heart rate variability. So when I checked out Apple sleep tracking, I believe it's still pretty accurate in the approximately 50% range uh, compared to other similar wearables. So that's totally fine. But if you look in the app, like where does it specify how much deep sleep I got? Where does it specify how much REM sleep I got? It's just so confusing and I don't even know if it shows it. I think that you literally have to download a completely different app, like a third party app to see this kind of critical and vital data. So why? And the last feature that I was so disappointed by is the oxygen saturation monitoring at night feature. So here's what happened. Take a look at this current screenshot. That is what some of my numbers were looking like throughout the night. So obviously I got really worried because 95% is the optimal and I was dipping below even 90, so that's kind of scary. So I took this numbers to my primary care provider and as soon as I explained what was happening, he basically rolled his eyes. He's like, not another person coming in here with an Apple reading showing their oxygen saturation. But I was like, aren't they accurate? And he said, yes, they are accurate. The problem is that Apple here is not actually showing you your whole night, like minute by minute readings. It's just taking random snapshots throughout the night. So for example, you could have gone below 90 and the whole episode could have just lasted a minute. And that's okay. That's not the end of the world. There's, there are people that their oxygen saturation drops you know, to 80 or even lower and that lasts for 10, 15 minutes. And that is truly scary because your vital organs like your brain are being robbed of oxygen. And that could lead to horrible, horrible health issues down the line. So yes, that is a huge problem, but 
the way that Apple is irresponsibly scaring people into thinking that they're having some sort of um, breathing issues is just awful. And in fact, what I did was I ended up investing in a well you ring that does take significantly more frequent oxygen saturation measurements and just have a look at my numbers. They're totally fine. Sure, there's a little bit of drop here and there, but it just comes right back up. And I've shown them to multiple doctors and they're completely in agreement that everything is fine. So overall, I think that Apple is improving in the way they're allowing people to see health features of their watch. And I do look forward to seeing what Apple Series 7 watch has in store for us. But for now, I'm sticking to my ordering. Good luck, everyone, and keep on raising your HRV.